one of the things this story told by Jesus reminds me of is that the opposite of love is not what a lot of people would automatically think of. Hatred, right? No. Because if you hate somebody, you're at least taking them seriously. The opposite of love is indifference. Because if you don't care about someone, it's like you're denying their existence. And that's a sort of hidden insult to God who created them because he loved the very idea of them and still loves them no matter what they do. You can't overcome their decisions with his love, but he makes every effort to reach them. And you and I are part of the effort. Sometimes people say when their immediate family has grown and moved on, that they, uh, they feel alone. They have nobody. That simply isn't true. They're used to focusing their attention on the people who were close to them but they're no longer that close. And now they're free to notice all the Lazaruses lying at the gate in need of attention and time and love. So that's the opportunity we all have. And we have to be careful that we don't get so distracted with our stuff with our responsibilities, some of which are necessary and some of which might not be. We need to keep simplifying our lives so that we can be available to the people around us who have needs that are not being met. And we don't always know from them what those needs are. But they have them. I know of a Methodist parish that at one time, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they had a special service as one of their Sunday services for people who were religiously illiterate. Now that isn't, I'm sure, how they advertised it, but uh, they found out a lot. They found out that there were a lot of those people out there. They found out that they couldn't use sacred words and phrases from the Bible that were very familiar to most Christians, but weren't to these people, even though most of them had Christian backgrounds. They found out that there were some people who, uh, who thought Jesus was some kind of an important person in history, and he probably was assassinated around the time of uh, Benjamin Franklin with uh, a rifle shot or something like that. That's all they knew about him. There even was one of our parishioners who uh, dropped into a religious goods store in Rome of all places, the holy city, the eternal city. I guess we don't call it holy because it really isn't. But, uh, and uh, this person saw a cross that appealed to them and they wanted to buy it. And so the man behind the counter said, now do you want a plain cross or one with the little man on it? He did not have a clue. And there he was in the eternal city. Well, his, his bishop, Francis, is working on that sort of thing. But uh, it's going to take a while. And the clergy can't do it all. We can't do half of it. Where you are in people's lives is not an accident. You were placed there by God, one way or another. Sometimes by good choices you made, sometimes by not so good choices. But God uses those to put us where we can do some good. 
at Methodist Parish also found out they had to print out the Lord's Prayer because nobody in that particular congregation knew it at all. Now, people aren't going to give themselves away. They're not going to raise their hand and say, I'm religiously illiterate. They're just going to clam up and try to pretend they can fit in. And, but they're lost, and they need to be found. And we can help them get found just by being good friends to them and listening to their questions and sympathizing with them when we can and doing the human things that God can use to make life meaningful for all of us, including ourselves as the evangelizers. We, uh, we get a, a real shot in the arm whenever we're able to help someone like that. But you don't always know you're helping them. Sometimes it's like seed planted deep in the soil. You planted the seed, but it was so deep that they didn't register anything when you planted it, when you said or, said or did whatever you said or did. And only later might you find out about it if they happen to recall it when they're talking to you and say, remember when you said or did this particular thing? That got to me. That affected the way I live. But you may never hear that in this life, but you will in the next. Also, we'll be aware of the times we were like the rich man. Isn't it interesting? The rich man isn't given a name by Jesus. The poor man is Lazarus. And in a way, maybe Jesus is leaving the, the name of the rich man blank so that we can insert our own. I mean, he wasn't a criminal. He, we're not told that he did anything horrible. So it's what he didn't do. Every day he would pass through that gate and see Lazarus. And he adjusted to it. That's just Lazarus. He's poor. That's tough. The thought that he could do something about it may not even have occurred to him. But he kept making that decision to go back, go, go forward, and never reflect on what was there to be done. And so we have to be that way. We have to, we have to uh, be reflective. We have to be alert and notice. Now, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees, of course, have a very bad press in the New Testament because we only hear about the, the ones that gave Jesus a rough time. And uh, there were some good ones. So he's trying to reach out to the good ones and encourage them, instruct them a little bit. And... Uh, Maybe, maybe just give the other one something to think about. But he had to say what he said. And he had to challenge us. That our love isn't so much something we feel. It's something we do. It's something we say without saying words with love in them. But just by treating people the way he wants them treated. Because everybody who exists was a deliberate choice by God. He created them because he loved the very idea of them so much. A lot of others didn't get created. As I like to say, that makes us all feel pretty good, kind of important, you know, because here we are, and some people aren't. Never were created never brought into existence. But everybody who is is important, important to God. Even the ones that drive us up the wall. So that's what love is all about. It's work. It requires alertness and deliberate thought. And if we incorporate it into our prayer, and keep asking God in different ways to deepen our insight 
into the needs of the people around us. We won't always come up with brilliant, highly refined answers. We don't need to. We'll be there for them. And that will be a message in its own right. So let's renew our efforts. There's nothing wrong with enjoying what you have in life, but it shouldn't own you. We do need to keep simplifying our lives, most of us, because things kind of get in our way. And that keeps us from fulfilling our mission and being part of the happiness of others and intensifying our own happiness without realizing it at, at the time so that we become instruments of the peace and love of God in the lives of everyone around us.